Hi, welcome to the Bridge Podcasts. We hope you enjoy the following message. For more information on all that's happening at the Bridge Church, please visit www.bridge-church.com. Good morning, church. Welcome to you wherever you are. Thanks for tuning in to Virtual Church today. Uh, God bless you. Um, it's good to be with you again. And uh, I believe that God has a, a message for us today. And so before we go to the message, why don't we pray together? Amen. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that your mercies are new every morning and great is your faithfulness to us, Father God. We thank you, Lord, that we can declare that your loving kindness is better than life itself. We can declare that every morning. And in the evening, Father God, we can, we can say that you've been faithful, you've remained faithful to us. Lord, we love you and we thank you today for your word. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for Jesus, our Savior. And we thank you, Father God, that as we share this message this morning together, Lord, that you'll quicken us, you'll quicken our spirits, you'll bring revelation. Father, and you, your word will inspire us today. Father God, to do great things in the times that we live in. So Lord, we just uh, dedicate this time to you and ask for your blessing on it. And everyone who's hearing this today, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, praise God, it's a lovely day here um, in West Kilbride, and I trust that it is for, for you, wherever you are today. Um, before we carry on, just want to Welcome everyone. We've got people that tune in from all over the world. Um, thank you for continuing to do so. It's a blessing. Uh, it's also a blessing to hear back from you and to hear some of your comments about what's going on wherever you are. Um, uh, the body of Christ is staying encouraged by encouraging one another around the world at the moment. Um, but I've got a couple of quick um, praise reports for you. Thank you for everyone who prayed for Jean McLaughlin, my gran. She's doing much better now. Thank you for that. And um, also we prayed for we, uh, Caleb Edopolo and um, uh, his mom sent me, uh, his mom Kat sent me a praise report and she says, thank you for all your prayers f uh, from yourself and the church for Caleb. Two days after the prayer request went out, he was 100% and he had actually been admitted to hospital with a high temperature. Um, I thank God every day. I went to get him out of his cot yesterday and he was on his knees praying in his cot. So cute. So praise God. Um, it's great to hear uh, news back that when we pray, we know God is faithful. Uh, he, he's a God of answered prayer and he's answering prayer, still doing it now. Amen. So trust that you're all well, that you're keeping your fighting spirit up. Um, and it sometimes... It feels like a fight, but you've just got to keep the faith, keep that fighting spirit, and uh, remember that we're in this together. So just be encouraged um, today. Encourage someone else today. Be a Barnabas for someone today. But, you know, I've been thinking uh, this week, um, as we just uh, heard on the uh, news uh, recently that lockdown has been extended for at least another three weeks. And I was thinking to myself about the fact that we are at the moment all out of the church. We know we are the church, but we are not congregating. We're not meeting in our building. And uh, so we're out of the church. And I don't believe that we're going to go back into the church building or come together again in the same way. I really I think that... Um, um, I'm echoing other voices in the world uh, s that are also saying that this is a time for a revitalization. It's time for uh, uh, the re-emergence of, of, of the church. And I really believe that. And I'm, 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 I'm in agreement with that. I mean, this enforcement is bringing about a, a lot of positive happenings in our community. And uh, that's um, good to see. It's very encouraging. Sure, we've still got uh, difficulties ahead of us in our economy. People's livelihoods are being affected. We don't take that lightly. There's still uh, 
difficult days ahead of us, but there's a lot more common good going on right now, which is encouraging to see. Um, and as I said a couple of weeks ago, I believe that the church is going to prevail. Amen. The church is going to prevail and it can emerge from this time even more strongly. I believe that with all my heart. And I found out this week that the number of people searching for the word prayer on Google went through the roof last month. You know, for every 80,000 confirmed cases of coronavirus, um, according to this, the search engine's um, request for the word prayer doubled. And I believe that's a sign of the times that we're living in. And so people everywhere um, recognize the days we're in, they're difficult times, but they're praying for the end of this pandemic. And they're praying for the safety and the welfare of everyone and everything that they hold dear. Praise God. Um, you know, our nearest and dearest, uh, we, we have to pray for them. Uh, we have to pray for our country, pray for our government. Pray without ceasing. Amen. And so uh, I, I also uh, seen another poll this week that 15% of those who seldom or never pray have prayed about the virus situation. And 24% of people who have um, no religious affiliation whatsoever have prayed about the virus situation. And that says to me that there's something stirring in people's lives. They recognize the times we're in and they're seeking and they're looking uh, for what to do about it. And so there is an opportunity for the church to be resurgent here, you know, and we have a huge part um, as the body of Christ to play in this. We have a huge part to play. And an article I was reading this week reminded me of how the church looked in those post-war years. Um, you know, the church was, uh, uh, was strong, um, in, especially in the 50s. It was almost like a golden years of the church in the United Kingdom. And um, since then, obviously, you know, I don't think we've faced national adversity like this, probably on this scale with this, loss, this much loss of life since those days. And in addition to that, we've got um, the progression of a very secular society and um, the, 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 the evidence would suggest, people would say, face the reality, Christianity is losing ground. But, you know, the church has been in crisis before and it's emerged strongly. Wherever um, you see a nation becoming weary and exhausted, the church has always emerged more strongly. And so I'm believing for that in, in just the same way, if not in a bigger way right now. And so I love that word resurgent, because if you look um, at the word surge, which is in the word resurgent, it reminds me of just things that surge into life. There's a, a surge, there's a, a forward and an upward thrust of, of, of momentum. It's, there's a surge of movement. And um, uh, as an as a old diesel mechanic, that's one of the sweetest things is when you're, you've been working on an engine or something that has, been, that has broken down or you've just had to overhaul it and uh, you've primed the engine and you've primed the fuel pumps and everything and you're going back to start that engine uh, for the first time and you go there and you hit the starter button and the engine surges into life. And it's just a great feeling. And uh, I believe that um, we're going to see that. We're going to see that surge from the body of Christ, from the church in the days ahead. And so I'm um, thinking about our own locations, our own localities. I want to encourage you not to be, let's not be invisible in our own towns. And uh, I know we're going to come together to worship in Kilwinning again. I know we're going to come together to celebrate um, together again, to have Sunday socials again, um, to do all of those things that we love and we enjoy to do. We will do it again. But, you know, all of us come from different local areas. Some of us 30 to 40 miles away 
from where our church building is. And um, these are our home territories. And we can be much more active in our own home territories at this point in time. There's still a lot of opportunity. There's still many, many things that we can do um, at this particular time. And, and what we are seeing and, and encountering is when you look out there is an ever increasing stronghold of fear definitely does seem to be gripping people and it's having a really crippling effect on people's lives. And we have an answer to offer. Amen. We have an answer to offer. And um, the timing is right now. Now is the time and we have the answer. And yeah, I believe that when the availability of what of that answer, that the truth intersects with the questions that people are having and the cries of the people crying out, when, when the truth intersects with the need, that's, a, that, that, that's an opportunity that's a God-given moment for us to take a hold of and to seize. And um, we've got to maximize the moments that we have right now. And one of, the, um, one of the things I believe that we need to pray against as the church is, is, the, is a snare, and it's a snare of idleness. And, and it's, it's so, it's, it, it's so um, easy to become idle at, in, at this point in time. It's almost as if um, you, know, you, could be, um, you could be stunned or um, immobilized. Uh, maybe I'm looking for a different wor word, but if you get what I mean, Sometimes we've got to be, be careful that we don't become idle. There's still things to do. And of course, we know that old proverb, you know, uh, who makes work for idle hands. And, and so we've got to, we can fill our time right now with pursuing, um, going deeper uh, um, in our service to our communities and our neighborhoods, and also just in our relationship with God. Amen. And so we've got to maximize the moment. And the answer it really is in the salvation that Jesus provided for us. Uh, um, just a couple of days ago, it was the end of Passover. Thank God um, for, for, for the Holy Week that's just passed. But Jesus died to give us the answer. And the answer was, pass was um, salvation. Amen. And so it's this new creation life that he's offered. And um, it's available right now. And um, uh, we can live our, our days according to the word of God and with the Holy Spirit's help. And we can take that message that you can live that way. You can live with the help of a supernatural power, God's Holy Spirit in your life every day. So we've got this opportunity right now. You know, I'm so thankful for what our country can provide. We're blessed to live in the UK um, where uh, we are, we are pretty pretty well looked after, and 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 we give our thanks on on behalf of the church and everyone we know. We give our thanks to every frontline worker that's doing their part to help us through this. That's a blessing. But I also see limitations. I see limitations in what uh, the country can offer, and you know, um, there's uh, our governments and systems of government and structures. Yeah, even even structures and uh, like like the NHS uh, and uh, different organisations may not always be there to help us. Uh, we've we, we we should never take them for granted. We're thankful, but they may not always be there to help us. And a lot of people right now are taking survival measures. Thank God that we are we we we, we are we are okay. Um, uh, and I am that we're tremendously thankful for that. Um, that, our need, that all of our needs are met according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. But there are people that are, that are struggling to survive right now. And when you have to live a life of mere survival, it gets very exhausting. Um, you can ask people all over the world, especially in parts of Africa and India, what it's, what it's like to live on the cutting edge of essentially life or death. And it's, it's exhausting. And, you know, for, for many people in our country right now, um, possibilities and opportunities and hope, they're shrinking. And, 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 and people are looking for things like that 
but they're not being they're not finding them and it's leading people into desperate situations people are beginning to despair over situations there's a lot of fear at the moment there's a lot of uncertainty concerning the days ahead and anyone living with that threat as we said a, a couple of weeks ago when you live with that threat over you or with with that sense of 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 peril or uncertainty then before too long um, it's going to wear you down and you're going to be exhausted but we've got a message of faith amen hallelujah we've got a message of faith to present to people and uh, we have to give it we have to tell people that they can trust God that they can put their trust in God and put their faith in what he says and and we've got that we're and and, and it's it's our it's our it's our mission to do that and so you know we have to tell them these these things so that they can be sure of the things that they're hoping for we are praying that hope is still there that there's that, that there's wherever there's an ember of hope that it'll come and it'll come into full flame again you know and um we've just got to give people that th that message that they can hope for the future and uh even though they may not know what's ahead of them and there's there's this unseen element um you know having giving people faith in jesus means that you know, even though you can't see what's ahead of you, the reality is that, that it's there. Um, in Christ, it's there. And so our obedience is by faith. Faith is important. I believe I was speaking to Pastor Bernie this week and he reminded me, even though we're doing a slightly different message today, we're going to get onto that in a moment. But he just reminded me of, you know, the message of faith that we, sh we can never stop releasing and giving and telling people about and our obedience is by faith. We obey God in faith. Amen. And so if any of you are familiar with Hebrews 11, it's the roll call of faith. I want to go through a few different things there. Not, not the whole chapter, but just some things that I think are relevant to the times that we're living in right now. And it's, it's like Noah, by faith, he proved the world he lived in at that time to be wrong. He clung on to God's command to build the ark and he was made right by God by faith. That his decision to obey God's voice um, and to block out the voice of the, 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 the voices around him was what justified him. It was faith that, 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 made, that made him right. And the other thing is, by faith, we're going to move forward as the church to a place where God promises we will eventually be. Just like many in that chapter, they moved forward by faith because God had promised them, this is where I want you to be. This is where you're going. Now, some of them never seen those promises come to pass, but we all got the benefit of them. Amen. We, we, we are the seed of Abraham. We got the benefits of his trust and his faith in God. We get the benefits of that. Isn't that amazing? And so we can move forward as the church to where God wants us to be. Where's that? Well, it's a place and a time where uh, there will be a prepared people, um, a unified, beautiful and worshipping church who are ready for the return of Jesus. And I know that our, our, our dear friend, um, Pastor Tom Ingalls, um, this has been his message for years, to see the church uh, come and be uh, a worshipping church, um, a bride who, who are ready for Jesus, Jesus' return. And I see as that's the place that God has prepared for us. That's a place that we're moving to. And you know, by faith, we'll always be moving towards the place that God has prepared for us. And the good news is for the telling. The good news is there for the telling that that place is a better place. There's always a better place to move to. And I think that's a great message to give to people right now, that there is a better place. There's a better way um, ahead of us. Amen. And so... It's by faith that we come through the tests that we're faced with. This is a massive test. It's a massive test for the country. It's a massive te test for the, 
for, for the world. It's, a, it's right down to the individual. It's a test. This is a testing time. But by faith, we can come through the test. It's by faith that we can, just like that young lady Nikki in the video said, that we can give in and surrender ourselves fully to the Lord Jesus Christ and not hide behind the stuff that we have. And that's what she says. It's, it's easy to hide behind the stuff. You know, it's easy to hide behind what the world has to offer, which is temporary security. It's easy to hide behind that. It's by faith that we identify with Jesus Christ and not with the world. Amen. And that's what we, I believe, is, is such a powerful message. People place their identities, who they identify with, what they identify with, in all sorts of different things. And we're thankful that we can, we can find our identity in Jesus. And that's a tremendous security. That's a tr there, you get a tremendous peace from that. Hallelujah. And so we identify with Jesus and not with the world. You know, the world can offer very short-term reward and pleasure. But, you know, God offers eternal uh, security and reward for those who will just honor him, honor his word and live their lives by his word. Amen. It's by faith that we cross over into the next season and we're coming up on a, on a next season. We're coming up on a new season. Some of us will need faith to cross the street and engage with our neighbor. Some of us will need faith just to cross the street or to go G-O. Some of us will need faith to go and engage with the world. We'll need faith to go and engage with the poor and the marginalized. Amen. We need faith to live a Christian life because the word says that it's faith that pleases God. So faith is still paramount. It's of paramount importance to us. And I, I, I want to remind all of us of that today. Amen. This um, chapter in Hebrews 11 reminds us, in verse 33 particularly, reminds us of the many great men and women who by faith defeated kingdoms and shut the mouths of lions. And, you know, there's plenty happening in the world right now and there's more, more to come. There's, there's more ahead. And sometimes it can look like it's going to devour you. It can feel as if it's going to overwhelm you. Um, but I declare in the name of Jesus that you will not be consumed. You will not be for devouring in Jesus' name. And you won't be overcome. You will not be overwhelmed in Jesus' name. And I declare that over the church today. I declare it over your lives today. Um, the word says that, that our adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Well, we declare today that you're not for devouring and that you will rise up and you, you'll have a fighting spirit in you um, that will carry you and your loved ones through this and all those that come into contact with you. You know, that chapter says that although we are weak, we are made strong. I love that when it says we are made strong. You know, it remi reminds me of those days where, you know, it was like made in Britain. You know, it stood for something, you know, um, built in Britain. You know, made in Scotland from girders. <laughs> if you're familiar with our national drink, built in Scotland, we're made strong. And so God makes us strong. Hallelujah. And more than ever, we've got to embrace faith as the way of life because our way of life is changing. And so we need to embrace faith as the way of life. Amen. And so we've got to do something. I believe now in this time, not be idle, but do things that demonstrate our faith in Jesus Christ. And, you know, you don't have to look far to find something that you can do that demonstrates that you trust God. And I want to encourage you today that um, even though faith involves effort and faith involves sacrifice, you can still do it. Amen. We can still do it as the Bridge Church in Ayrshire, we can still do it. Wherever you are in the world, whatever local denomination or church you belong to, you can still do it. You can still um, uh, put in 
a, a great effort in these times. Um, make, make the sacrifices that are that you that you hear the voice of the Spirit requiring of you that we say, we resist them so often because they take us out of our comfort zone. They take us out of that place of of feeling settled. And God's calling us not to be a settled people. Don't get settled. It's unsettling times now. There'll be more unsettling times ahead. I want to come back onto something about that in a little while. But today, um, I want to encourage you, if you've got some time later on, read that chapter in Hebrews 11. It'll encourage you. Um, I want to just uh, introduce something that we're going to do over the forthcoming weeks. Um, this morning, you watched a little short uh, video, mini movie, before you came on to the message. Um, and it's by uh, a producer um, over uh, in, in, in the States. And the, 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 the series is called 12 Neighbours. And um, when I was revisiting some resources that I looked at for the church two years ago, I came across this and and, and, and I believe it was a God thing. I clicked on it. I watched some of the resources there and they really moved my heart. And I, I hope that watching even just that introduction video this morning has stirred something up in you and moved your heart. And um, just certain things since in the last couple of weeks have affirmed that this is something that we'd like to do as a church and as life groups going forward. And so... Um, the format for, for, for the weeks ahead, and we may still intersperse some of these messages with other messages of faith um, from Pastor Bernie, and, but we're going we're gonna to focus on this um, theme right now of, of our neighbours, loving our neighbours. And uh, we're out of the church, um, we're in our neighbourhoods, um, we're not going to go back into the church and seal the doors. Um, there's much for us to do. So um, over the weeks, I think this is going to inspire in us um, a boldness and a, and a confidence and a courage to go and engage with the lost. Um, and we'll build on this to help you be confident sharers of God's word and of the gospel. Amen. And so this morning, I want to... Uh, go off the back of that short video and, and bring this little introductory message this morning. And um, I want to go to Romans chapter 13, verse 8 in the, in the NIV. And it says there that love fulfills the law. Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. And I want to give you another couple of key scriptures this morning that you can underline in your Bible or use your highlighter. We're going to come back to these over and over again. The first one is in Mark chapter 12, verse 30 and 31. It says, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul and with all of your mind and with all of your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. So that first commandment is to love the Lord your God, with everything that's in you. And the second commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself. Going on to Galatians chapter 5, verse 14, it says, For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbors as yourself. Hallelujah. Um, the message I'd like to focus on, the story I'd like to focus on this morning is the well-known parable of the Good Samaritan. And I'm sure um, a lot of us are familiar with that. Um, it's, 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 it's not a long story, and for the sake of time this morning, I'm not going to read through it. But um, let's go over my, my notes here, and we'll pick a few things out that I, think will, that I think will encourage you. You know, this story of the Good Samaritan, the, it's set up by this man of the law or this lawyer who's questioning Jesus. And, you know, that the story of this question that he's asking Jesus really sets up a narrative um, that we see played out in people in society, even to this day. The word of God is timeless. 
we, we never change as people. And so what, what I mean is our basic human um, instincts, uh, our, our carnal nature is, 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 always, is always there. And so, you know, this guy is asking Jesus this question. And he's looking for this assurance and affirmation that if we do certain things, good works, if you like, that somehow our future will be secure. And, you know, if I do what seems uh, right and what's good in my own eyes and in the eyes of, my, of, the, of the world around me, my society, um, and surely, surely God's going to approve of these things too, then, you know, my future, my eternity is looking good. And so this, this, this man of the law was angling towards being justified in loving only those people that would have been relatively easy for him to love. Um, these would have been people that were from his own people group. Um, they would have been people that looked like him, sounded like him, spoke like him, believed like him and held the same values as he did. And I can imagine this man maybe would have been a little bit smug, knowing in himself and coming here to be able to genuinely present himself before Jesus as a good man. You know, he'd, he'd upheld the law and, you know, it, there was no questions asked. You know, I love God. And, you know, from a personal point of view, uh, and it's okay to get personal um, when we share with, with others and with our neighbours, it's something I have to confess to doing as well. You know, I've put my list of things together that I can say are good things. You know, these things must make God happy, you know. Um, surely, Lord, these things please you. And I have these things that, 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 that before I've, I've maybe even become a little bit smug about, you know. These are things that I do. These are the good things that I do. But, you know, just like this man, he really already knew that Jesus had looked further into his heart. Jesus could see beyond what was just there in, that was happening in the, in, the, in the here and the now at that particular place. And Jesus, he just does that with 100% accuracy every time. We, could never, we can never hope to pull the wool over Jesus' eyes. And it's, this man was just about to get schooled on the truth of the matter. And... So he's there, this man, this lawyer, to have a bit of a parley-vous with Jesus. And he wasn't expecting his pride to be exposed. And, you know, in light of that great promise, that scripture that we read earlier, you know, to love the Lord your God and then to love your neighbor as yourself in order to live and to inherit inter eternal life, you know, we stand accountable for that. And you, you'll, you'll read that in, that in that parable there of the Good Samaritan. He says, um, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus goes on to have this dialogue with him. So, um, to be devoted to him and to cherish him above everything else. But what about loving our neighbours as ourselves? To do good to all people without withholding anything, to treat others as we would expect to be treated. Amen. These are the things that we'll stand accountable for. I believe we must be ready to answer that question if it were asked of us. Why do you love God? Most of us would readily say, well, I love God because he first loved me. I think most of us, that would come to our minds quickly. But it's an altogether different proposition, but it's not that different in the spirit of it to be asked, why do you love your neighbor? And I think it would, perhaps I might be wrong, but it would rarely be the answer because they loved me first. I did see a wonderful thing on television, on the news this week about a... Um, a, a small local area in London, a very well-known lady, a neighbour in that neighbourhood had passed away and people came out of their homes to honour her and, respect, and, and show their respects. 
But I think, you know, if someone asked you, why do you love your neighbor? It might, might be unusual <laughs> or uncommon to get that answer because they first love me. And so we are presented with this opportunity to be able to give another human being a reason to give this very answer if they were asked. We've got this opportunity to give another person the ability to answer in that way. Why do you love your neighbor? Well, because they first loved me. And so I think that's an incredible thing to, to ponder on and to meditate on. You know, there are times when we come to the Lord and we say, Father, these things I believe, these things I uphold, aren't they good? You know, aren't they what you ask of me? And, and God will never disagree with his own word. Amen. Uh, the things that God says, if we, if we bring God's word back to him and we say, you know, these are all, the th God will never disagree with his own word. Amen. But just as in this scene, Jesus kind of pats the man on the back for getting the answer right. Yes, you're right. Do these things and you'll inherit eternal life. But we can't take advantage of God like this or abuse his word because many times we just leave too much unsaid in the background simply because we know the true answer already and we naturally want to avoid the feelings that the truth brings along with it. So we see the story of this poor man the good Samar in the Good Samaritan. So here's this poor man who'd been traveling between these two towns and he's been beaten and robbed. And it shows us a principle at work here. We see this poor man being denied any compassion. He's being denied dignity. He was not only uh, robbed and beaten, he was stripped totally naked as well. He's been treated mercilessly, mercilessly um, until the Samaritan passes by. So we know the story there. Um, a priest and a Levite had already passed. One of them had even gone over to see what the matter was, what's going on here. And then quickly I can imagine him shuffling back over that dusty road and just getting on his way saying, like, mm, okay, you know, that's what it really feels to be blanked. And so <clears throat> he's been treated this way until the Samaritan passes by. And God knows it's easy to love people who can help us back or who can assist us. But what about loving someone who's in that position, who's got absolutely nothing to offer us. They have nothing to give us that will advantage us in any way whatsoever, you know. And so that's an entirely different proposition because it's easy, I, I, I believe, to help people. That, and, and if our motives, if we don't check our motives, the reason we help people is because we know we'll, we'll, there's something coming in return. Um, but the, the compassion of Jesus never expected anything in return. It just, uh, he just loved people. And so I believe that we can help the poor and the powerless. We sing that song at church. We can help them to rise up. And if we can do that, then we'll be living the life of Christ. We'll be living the life of Jesus Christ, the way he lived it. And it's the way of the kingdom. You know, the people that we deny favor to will become the ones to whom God will transfer favor. And so we've, we, we really need to um, remember the favor that God showed us and be quick to dispense that favor upon other people. And in the process, we give up and forfeit the blessing of God's favor on our own lives if we don't do that. If we if we deny favor to anyone else, we forfeit the blessing of God in our own lives. It's a very, very serious thing. And it's like the words referred to in the film by the man speaking with the young man who said, yeah, if, you go, if you can rewind in your mind to the little movie, he's speaking to this young man and this man says that he's waiting for the last to be first. And so we know this story goes on to describe the men. And, and these were men of this poor man's own nationality. They were Jews also. And, and, and as I said, one was a priest and one was a Levite. So they were holy people. 
they were they were they 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 were you know they were they were church people and so these weren't just the the uh, for one of a better word the common men of the time and then comes this man from samaria and the, you know these people the samaritans were despised by the jews and he comes along and he reaches out to this poor guy with care and compassion and then he goes to extraordinary lengths to administer first aid both physically and emotionally a big part of it was him inquiring of, of this man and 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 you know i can just imagine a bit of the dialogue there that was going on and so you know some sometimes you know it, we have to sow time into our neighbors and not just material things and here's this man he stopped to sow time into this man and so and then he selflessly walks the rest of the way he puts this man on his own donkey and he walks uh, to the inn and i don't believe it was just an act of human pity i believe it was an act of faith for the samaritan to go out of his way to attend to this man and that's what we were saying at the beginning you know sometimes it's going to take an act of faith to cross the street it's going to take an act of faith to go to a place to bring hope and to bring a message amen and when we reach out to our neighbors we do so in faith and we go beyond the possible rejection that we might find and in some case, cases it may even be the probable rejection that we might encounter and we got to believe that that Jesus works through us as we move towards or should i say to cross the road towards the hurting or towards that neighbor that needs help he's always waiting for us to make the first step whether it's towards the robbed the naked the destitute the distressed the wounded the helpless those that cannot fend for themselves and to see these people as Jesus seen them that takes faith and the evidence is even though many don't know it they've been at the mercy of our adversary satan of 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 the devil and they need a samaritan um they need they need uh, jesus with skin on they need jesus and i i read um somewhere that the religious people of that time actually tried to be unkind to jesus by naming him as a samaritan and so and despite all of that jesus just lo- loved loved his people loved people so sometimes uh, rejection is not only going to be possible but it's going to be probable to have to say that we have to be ready for that you know but it was this very man the samaritan who was inspired to go and love another and to go and bring someone who was uh not of his own into that circle of compassion and to close this message today i want to encourage you you know the church has been and still is in some parts of the world it's it's a bold and transformational people we're going to be called upon to do bold and transformational things this act of compassion was a bold and a transformational thing it certainly affected the lives of those who were directly involved in it but we should never not do something because we feel it's only going to have um a short the the the, re, the impact is is not going to reach out enough it 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 shouldn't be about that it's 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 the least of the the, the least of these things the least the, the in terms of people it's the least of them that need our help the most and so people's lives will be radically changed and transformed by the message of salvation that we have and once they're saved they become part of a transformational community and whenever you're part of something that's transformational then i th- i believe you have to understand that change is normal and and this has been a massive change for people in their lives people's routines have gone out the window new routines are being formed new habits are being formed 
We, we, we trust God that they're good ones. Um, but whenever uh, you're part of a transformational community, things are not going to be settled or normal. And in fact, dramatic changes are something that we as the church should be better equipped to deal with than most people. We should be able to deal with dramatic change. And sometimes we think, you know, it'll all settle down again. But the reality is that we as the church, you know, we probably need to accept that things may need to remain the way they are. I'm not saying uh, chaotic, but if things are unsettled, it's a time for us to move. Just that I'm thinking it just came into my heart right there. It was like the pool of Bethesda. Um, when those waters were stirred, that was the time when this man who needed his healing needed to get there. <laughs> and he needed help to get in there. It was always being crowded out of the way. As soon as things begin to be unsettled, then I believe that's a time where great opportunities present themselves, where lives will be transformed, where people can be, <laughs> their lives can be, can be changed, they can be healed, they can be transformed. It's, I, I, when I think of it, I just, I'm, I, I just, I'm, I'm happy. What a blessing it would be to be a part of that transformation. And so there's always going to be movement in God's kingdom. Let's embrace the time that we live in right now. Um, we don't, we pray against all of the, the, the destruction it's causing, but we embrace the opportunities it's bringing. And if you've listened to this message today, I want to say God bless you. Um, if, you if your heart has been moved or stirred, if you're, if you're unchurched, um, if you've never May Jesus Christ, the Lord of your life, we'd love to hear from you. Let us know your contact details. We'll phone you and we'll, we, we'd, lo we'd love to introduce you to Jesus and pray the prayer of salvation over the telephone with you or whatever. You can even pray it right now in your living room or wherever you are. Um, you can get a Bible from somewhere or on the internet and go to Romans chapter 10 verse 9. And you can, you can confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus died for you, he was crucified for you, and that uh, God raised him from the dead so that you would have new life. So we have new life, resurrection life, when we put our faith and our trust in Jesus. So I want to say thank you for being with us today, and uh, one, uh, we'll look forward to the weeks ahead with our new series on neighbours, loving your neighbour, and we believe that it will transform the church. So let's close in prayer today family amen thank you father father god we turn to you today and we ask you to heal our land take sickness and disease away from our nation father god we pray for the restoration of what's been lost we pray for hearts to turn back to you because you are el shaddai you are god almighty and we pray that your power and your might would be seen and known up and down this land, all across Scotland, all across the British Isles, Father God. As you save the lost and you deliver us from the evil that would try and pervade our times, Father God. Father, we want to see the church, we want to see our nation hunger and thirst for your righteousness again, just like it was in days past. Let it be so again, Lord, in Jesus' name. We call the church and this nation into unity to worship you and to seek you and only you for our deliverance. We lift up our eyes to the hills from where our help comes from. We know that, Father God, we don't fully know what is in store for us in the weeks and the months ahead. But we place our lives and, we, and the church under your care and under your guard and under your protection, Father God. We're so thankful. We pray, Father God, for your relief for every hurting person, every troubled soul, um, so much going on behind closed doors right now. We pray for everyone who's struggling in an abusive situation. We pray for the f their freedom and deliverance from that in Jesus' name. We pray, Father God, for a surge of your spirit. We pray for a resurgence of the church. We pray, Father God, that you bring fresh new life and hope to all who are crying out to you for, for that right now, Father God. We pray, Father God, for a surge of compassion to fill your people 
as we become the neighbours that you want us to be. We thank you, Father God, for the encouragement of your word as we spend these days strengthening our faith and being an encouragement and strength to someone else, to another. Father God, we ask all of these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Stay safe and we'll be together soon. Thanks for listening. Remember to visit our website, www.bridge-church.com and connect with us via Facebook and Twitter.